do you think Ethereum and crypto will continue to grow and gain usership within the next five to 10 years? I think that depending on the market conditions, I mean, like we are really on the press. And if we do get down into the weeds with like economic World War III continuing, like we've seen where China's stopping exporting fertilizer and microchips and Ukraine and Russia are in a war and that war maybe spreads and like, you know, the wheat harvest is going to cause starvation all over the world. I mean, like gas prices are going to keep going up. Europe just said they were going to sanction Russia, which is basically like kicking, like shooting themselves in the head because they rely on Russia for between 30 to 70 percent of their natural gas and coal. Um, so that's going to cause a run up in the price of oil. As inflation continues in the West and gets crazier overseas, I mean, you see Sri Lankans right now are like revolting and like burning down the houses of politicians and like killing politicians and shit because they ran out of fuel and they're running out of food. Chinese people are, are like starving to death in Shenzhen. There's a lot of serious shit going on in the world and the, the macro markets are still overvalued. Like this, the S&P 500 came down a lot. A lot of tech stocks came off their highs by quite a bit. They look like shit coin charts peloton and netflix and stuff like that but most average people haven't felt that yet because yeah we've seen we've seen a bit of high inflation people are starting to feel the food rising food and fuel costs but we haven't really experienced what nigerians and lebanese people and you know people like that have experienced so we still have monetary privilege here if we if we actually get to a point where there's a sovereign debt crisis and the global bond market really rolls over and there's actually like no bid for new treasuries I mean, look, the, the U.S. debt is $30 trillion right now. There's $9 trillion of maturing debt in the next 24 months. Like, that's insane. It's basically Ponzi-nomics. It's, like it's like almost like a DeFi Ponzi coin. <laughs> like, the Federal Reserve has to buy treasuries currently to sustain the demand for, the, you know, the Congress voting to have, have all these uh, deficits. So, like, if you have another $10 trillion of, of treasuries that need to get issued when there's problems globally with money and economic war is happening and like people are starving. I don't think we're going to see starving people in the U S and Canada, but like you are already seeing like baby formula shortages in the U S there's a lot of shit happening in the world, man. And the housing market hasn't even come off yet. Like in Toronto, the housing bubble is so crazy in Toronto. It's one of the worst in the world. Even in my small area, I live two and a half hours from Toronto and my house cost me $270,000 to build in 2010. So, and, and at that time it was $270,000. I thought like I was getting ripped off. I'm like, this bubble is crazy. Just like I thought with Ethereum. I was like, this, this freaking thing is too expensive. It's overvalued. <laughs> I should be paying like 230 for this thing, maybe. I'm getting ripped off 10 to 20%. The housing market has to come down. Well, it turns out when you pump trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars into the system and you suppress interest rates and keep them low and you create tons of credit through the commercial banking system and big, big money gets to access more money that's getting created through loans, they're going to deploy that money and it's going to cause inflation of asset bubbles. So I didn't recognize that before. But now I do kind of recognize that, like I was talking about this in January when everybody was saying, oh, it's new alt season's going to happen and Bitcoin's to 100K, ETH to 10K. I was tweeting like, pucker up, guys. Like this is this shit's about to hit the fan. Like there's this is not going to be pretty over the next six months. Because you I was right all of 2021 as well. Well, not quite to that extent about like all through 2021, I was actually identifying like, OK, we're going to have a dot com 2.0 bubble because look at all the money getting poured into this stuff. Through 2021, I've had like pretty good calls at the bottoms of like when we had the um, dumps off the China mining ban and things like that. I was also watching like Andreessen Horowitz raised $200 billion and EOS is doing a $9 billion SPAC and like all this other like, you know, all these celebrities getting in and chilling all this stuff. I'm like, this is going to blow up. We're, we're, we're not done yet. We're going to go back up. It's going to be crazy. Everybody get ready for that. But I was also at the same time saying, but the shit is about to hit the fan in the macro market. So when that does, get ready for 20K Bitcoin. 
and mm. destruction 90% wrecked in all altcoins because when the shit hits the fan in the macro market, nothing is going to be saved. And I was, I was kind of like, I was, I misplayed the Ethereum price call. I did call the altcoins and the NFTs and all. I was tweeting about the NFT bubble before most people even, I was buying crypto punks in 2020, like for three ETH. Oh, I was really? Like, I mean, I, I saw people who were stupid. They're going to start freaking valuing JPEGs. So I was like, I, I can identify when, when shit's about to go and deploy a little bit of capital while also being critical of it because I know it's nonsense. In the end, it's going to get people wrecked. So I think like that question about where we're going with growth, all the things I just said about the macro conditions, if that doesn't get solved, like if, if it continues on the trend we're on right now, we're going to see sovereign debt crisis. We're going to see the NASDAQ and S&P 500 continue to fall. We're going to see the housing market crash 50%, maybe. Like some people say I'm crazy for saying that high, but some people are saying 20, 30%. My house where I live right now, like it went from 270 to $950,000. It's almost like, what's that? A three X or something in 10 years. And it was, it was a two X in the last three years. That's just craziness. Like the, there's no way that's sustainable. So like in the world where we get into a recession or we get into stagflation or at worst, we get into a global depression or on the other side, we get into a hyperinflationary collapse because they, they can't stop you know, printing and they start doing UBI and debt forgiveness and all this stuff. Something is, something's going to happen. This is not just going to be like the, the last 10 years. It's, it's just craziness the way where we are right now. And in that world, I think that we're going to, see less and less people wanting to give a crap about DeFi and Ethereum and NFTs. And because in the end, the fundamental thing that you really care about in that scenario is just money. Like you just want to save your value. You don't want to be owed. And the reason why I think this is because for the last four or five years, I've been monitoring the search traffic for key search terms in crypto when I kind of make my decisions about trends, because I like to analyze like, is alt season going to start? Because I want to deploy. If alt season is going to start, I'm going to make some Bitcoin. Or is, are we going to have continued bear market? And so one of the things I look at is like the Google search trends. And I look for patterns in the Google search trends. And I look all over the world and see like, where are people searching for what? So right now, but based on volume, TVL, all that stuff, you can see there's a decline in interest in a lot of this stuff. But even search traffic, if you look at um, for the last, say, like even through all through the bear market in Nigeria, they were looking for Bitcoin. So it's like a, if you look at the USA and Canada and pretty much everywhere, you can see like Bitcoin spikes in 2017 when the FOMO happened and then crypto spikes right after it. Ethereum kind of spikes, but never really gets anywhere. And then it all shrinks off a cliff. Into, into 2019, there was another spike when the plus token Ponzi was happening because they were that was super popular. And the spike was more so in Asian countries because that's where the plus token Ponzi was most prevalent. And that pumped us. Bitcoin went up to 13K, if you remember, and then ETH went up too. And everybody's like, yeah, it's starting. The mm. institutions the, the institutions are here. But it was really just this freaking Ponzi scheme that pumped everything in crypto. And then it crashed after they got arrested and they had to dump all their coins. And then it took us a little while. But then GameStop, you can see a massive spike in GameStop. It got up to the same fever pitch of Bitcoin in 2017. Dogecoin, crazy spike up. NFTs had not as much of a spike, but a good spike. Ethereum never really had a spike. And it was actually crypto, this cycle, all over the world that was more search terms. You know, it wasn't Ethereum, DeFi. DeFi never registered. Nobody gives a shit about DeFi in, in anywhere in the world. People care about NFTs, crypto, Ethereum a little bit, DeFi even less, Bitcoin is the big one. Like people care about Bitcoin. And that's been for the last few years. I have never seen anything spike above Bitcoin except for NFTs in Asia. Right now, over the last two months, it's insane. In South Korea, in China, in Japan, it's fever pitch right now. The NFTs are going crazy right now in the Asian countries. I find that's really interesting because like you don't see that level of crazy speculation happening in any of the other countries or even here. But like 
put that backdrop, like all that stuff I just talked about on the search volume for countries that have hyperinflationary currencies, countries that have financial oppression, countries like Nigeria, 200 million people live in Nigeria. They've got a super high inflation in their currency. They need Bitcoin. Like the people that live in Nigeria, they're searching for Bitcoin always. When, when you see the spikes in Dogecoin and NFTs and crypto and, and GameStop in, in Nigeria, they barely even register. Like those people that actually need Bitcoin for the utility of like saving and using it for protecting themselves against their government and their currency, they don't have the privilege to be able to go and speculate on shit coins and go adopt the next trend of whatever it is. So I really do think that as, the, as we continue in this world of like more and more censorship, potential stagflation or depression, or like even just not even depression, just recession, like put yourself back in the mindset of 2008, 2009, if you're listening to this and you were around then, you know, like you had, it was the time where you had to scrimp and save and you weren't probably spending a lot of money on extracurricular stuff. And people tend to go like they, they come back off the risk curve when the financial conditions are not so frothy. And when the wealth effect evaporates from having a real piece of real estate that went up 3x in 10 years, you feel rich. Most people, the majority of their assets are their home. And if their home's up 3x, they get a million dollar house, they feel rich. So they take money and they go speculate, they go buy things, they go travel, they upgrade their homes, whatever they do. But when the market cools off like that and it starts to crash and gets into recession territory, you, you know, I do fully expect to see the users of DeFi, BSC, Pancake Swap, Uniswap, like all the different chains, even if they're cheap, Solana, everything. I expect to see it come down as people care less and less about speculative, you know, taking risk. The only thing that I think will change that is gaming because. People, even during 2008, 2009, 2010, loved playing games. That's when the Facebook game trend Triangle, yeah, 2009. kicked off. It was crazy. People look for, edu they look for entertainment to escape their problems. So game fi, game, you know, game tokens, whatever. I don't think people should necessarily be like super like looking to invest in game tokens at high valuations. But I do think that like blockchains will be used for nfts long term for things like digital collectibles digital game assets digital art I, I i i have no doubt that that's here to stay the idea of having digital game assets is just here and it's never going to be put back in the box just like bitcoin was never going to be able to put back in the box i think the problem is that people are selling nfts as if it's this new technology that like is going to make them rich and disintermediate the middleman and therefore they're fleecing a lot of people and people are getting wrecked on investing in this stuff you should, they shouldn't be looked at really as investments. They should be just looked at as a technology, as a, like a tool, like a stable coin. You know, like an NFT that you buy from an influencer that you like will eventually, everybody's going to be using it. Like it's going to be like, there's going to be trillions of NFTs. So they will eventually will figure this out that this was a bubble. The technology's interesting. We're building it on Bitcoin. There's NFTs on the Liquid Network. We have Tarot coming out on the Lightning Network. Like there's going to be digital art and NFTs on Bitcoin. There is already digital art and NFTs on Counterparty with the rare Pepe's and stuff. So it's going to get built on Bitcoin, but it's going to be done, I'm sure, on Solana and other chains too, BSC. Like Binance is not going anywhere. They've, they're they the biggest exchange. So for your question, I think I would answer like... And I want to remind you, the question was... Um, the question was, do you think Ethereum and crypto will continue to grow and gain usership within the next five to 10 years? Yeah. So in this environment, over the next few years, I don't think it's going to grow users. I think what's going to grow users in crypto and, uh, and maybe Ethereum, but I think more so off Ethereum. I think like the other next layer, next gen stuff is more suited for these types of use cases like games. I don't think DeFi is going to get used very much at all, ever. I just don't think it's that interesting. I think the only thing interesting about DeFi is like being able to take loans and do micro loans and things like that. I think all these Ponzi schemes that are built with DeFi protocols are just going to prove to be just failures and just nobody's going to want to adopt that stuff because it's too risky and it doesn't make any sense. All the yield is unsustainable. But the thing that people are going to always want to do is play games and have fun. And 
if you can do that on blockchains, it does make sense that we would see that. Like Wax actually is the most used blockchain of any of them right now. Wax has more users and more transactions, but nobody buys Wax coin really. Like Wax coins wrecked. Nobody even knows about Wax. But Wax has partnerships with Tops and all these like pretty pretty big companies. Another Novogratz winner, you know. <laughs> so I do think that like you will see more users on crypto blockchains if you know if the federal reserve comes in and starts printing and provides liquidity and we get another 10 20 trillion dollars printed and the fed actually con- comes in and can stop this recession from happening and they reinflate all the bubbles like the stock tech stocks start going again growth stocks they solve the problems of the bond market look i i don't know what the likelihood of this happening is um but if that happens then yeah i think there's going to be more fomo you know, because it'll be safe to go back out under the risk curve. And then there may be opportunity in crypto and buying coins and stuff because we will never have reconciled. There will be no capitulation. There will be no reconciliation. People won't go back and look and say, well, maybe it was a mistake to value these things based on utility and TVL and stuff. But if over the next six months, the Fed, six to 12 months, the, the, the Fed, the Treasury, the commercial banks, they all work together to like reinflate markets and flood the flood the system with more cash and do more lending i'm sure there's going to be opportunity to make money alpha over bitcoin by trading cryptocurrencies in that environment if that doesn't happen i think they're going down another 50 60 70 80 percent like some of them are going to go down 95 percent, 99 percent. you're going to you're going to have like the dragon chains and the salt lendings and all these things of the last cycle where everybody was like, the, uh, these Disney's involved with Dragon Chain and Salt Lending the, is the first DeFi lending app, or whatever. Well, the SEC came in and have other words for those things. They had to do rescission. They still exist, but they're down like 99%. There's going to be a lot more stories like that. For sure. For sure. I think we can both agree on what that. What do you think? Oh, I think, yeah, I think. Ethereum and crypto will continue to gain usership within the next five to 10 years. I think like back 2018, 2019, 2020, when I was really getting into crypto full time, I wasn't sure. And I was like listening to these Bitcoin maximalists and they were making some great points. I think there's so many great Bitcoin only like yourself, people to go to podcasts and such to get great Bitcoin information. But I found, especially back then, perhaps it's changed now. There was a lack of information when it came to crypto and you really didn't learn that much and everything was just kind of like the same scam at dogecoin is the same as eth which is the same as this um but i i think uh, i mean i agree with travis kling just put out a great statement a press release and twitter thread talking about how he's going his fund uh, whatever it's called the kigi is going from what it just used to basically trade bitcoin and try and beat the bitcoin market and now they're going uh, more into gaming like you mentioned and uh L1s and just crypto in general. I mean, he laid out well, why the use case for crypto is more clear. Um, so I, I'm, I think I'm hugely bullish on Bitcoin. I think that's going to continue to lead the market, but I think um, Ethereum and crypto are going to continue to gain usership in the next five to 10 years.